is humidity at 89% and winds gusting to 22 miles per hour. So it is cold, it's breezy, and it's still a little bit drizzly, but as far as any kind of actual rainfall, moderate to light rainfall, that's mainly to the south. Areas of Pulaski County, now in areas of Wilcox County, and all of this really starting to push out this evening, which is good because we have seen a lot of rainfall just in the past 24 to 36 hours. Some places seeing over four inches of rainfall near Unadilla, around 2.6 near Eastman, and and 1.7 over near Irwinton as we head through the rest of the evening. It is going to be cold, so definitely grab some layers if you're headed out. 50 degrees by around 2 a.m., 47 by around 5 a.m. In high definition, this is 41 NBC News at 6. Well, good evening. Thanks for joining us for 41 NBC News at 6. I'm Tucker Sargent. Our top story tonight, we start with breaking news. Colonial Pipeline initiated the restart of pipeline operations. That's according to a Colonial Pipeline news release, which said it will take several days for the product delivery supply chain to return to normal. The company says it will conduct a comprehensive series of pipeline safety assessments in compliance with all federal pipeline safety requirements as it initiates its return to service. Well, a teenager is in critical condition after a shooting this afternoon around 1 o'clock. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says it happened at a home on New Clinton Road. Witnesses told deputies multiple guns were pulled out and fired after a fight broke out between several people. 17-year-old Shadiha Field was shot and taken to the hospital. Stay with 41 NBC for updates as we get them. Well, Bibb County investigators are looking for a man they say is wanted for criminal attempt to commit murder after a shooting last Wednesday. Investigators say 30-year-old Montego Mann is 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs about 130 pounds. He has a beard but may have shaved it. Investigators have also identified the suspect wanted for a shooting outside a North Macon restaurant. The Sheriff's Office believes this man is responsible for the shooting outside Glory Day's Grill Sunday afternoon. They say he may have been possibly driving a Nissan Sentra. If you can help Deputies find this person or solve that other case. Call Crime Stoppers at 1-877-68-CRIME. Well, May 15th is known as Peace Officers Memorial Day across the U.S. And to honor the fallen, Georgia Military College held a special ceremony. 41 NBC's Elizabeth Gutierrez was there and spoke with the school about its importance. The ceremony held here at Georgia Military College was a way of remembering and honoring soldiers that attended the college. Even within their own class, um, the school here, we've had two that have fallen uh, while serving the state of Georgia. And so we remember them and then, of course, everyone across the state of Georgia. Deputy Will Robinson and Special Agent Sonny King were two alumni of Georgia Military College who lost their lives in the line of duty. In their memory, GMC and law enforcement officers across the community gathered to lay a wreath in their honor. President of GMC, William B. Codwell IV, says having this event helps show the students, law enforcement officers, and those in the military are doing their best to keep everyone safe. When you stop to think about it, the families, each day when that man or woman goes out, as we say, you know, wakes up, put straps on their, their sidearm, and goes out to serve and protect, they're never sure what's going to happen. The college says the event helps strengthen its mission of teaching duty, honor, and country. John Melvin, assistant director for the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, says even in this time of division, they're here to help. You do what's right even when it's not easy. You do what's right because it's the right thing to do. Uh, but it sure is nice to just have people that will come together and say thank you. That sure does feel good. In Milledgeville, Elizabeth Gutierrez, 41 NBC News. And the school says it plans to continue remembering the fallen soldiers and law enforcement from the area. Monroe County schools have decided to relax a major COVID-19 restriction. Since December, students in middle and high school have been required to wear masks in school. The Board of Education decided last night to recommend masks instead of requiring them. The board says declining cases and vaccinations rising in the community went into the decision. Superintendent Mike Hickman says although the pandemic isn't over, they feel confident cases will remain low. But I think we do have to remain uh, vigilant and continue to watch the numbers. COVID's not over, and this decision doesn't mean we think it's over. It's just adjusting the protocols to where we are right now uh, with the cases in the system and our county. 
and schools will still encourage social distancing and recommend frequent hand washing. Higman says they'll use the summer to continue monitoring case numbers. On well, July 4th weekend will be a lot more booming and bright in Warner Robins this year compared to last. City officials held a news conference today to announce the lineup for the Independence Day celebration. 41 NBC's Ariel Schiller has more on the big announcement. The Warner Robins Independence Day celebration is back after being canceled last year due to COVID. Mayor Tom says there's many things to celebrate this year. The celebration will be at McConnell Talbert Stadium on July 2nd. Mayor Randy Toms announced there will be musical acts like AJ the DJ, Leah Bell Fazer, Callista Clark, and the main attraction, rising country music star Jimmy Allen. Coming off of a, a global pandemic where we couldn't have it last year makes it even more exciting that we get to say we're back and we're doing this to celebrate so many things this year. And so it's just, it's just so, it's rich with excitement. Mandy Stella is the city clerk and public information officer for Warner Robins. She says the city usually begins planning the event in August for the following year, but this year they didn't start planning until March. She says they're excited the celebration is back. We do look forward to hosting people in Warner Robins, um, whether they're local to Warner Robins or um, from outside communities coming in. The city hopes families will come out like in years past. The event will not have mandates regarding COVID, but do encourage people to follow COVID protocols. Stella says if people are concerned about COVID, there are other ways to enjoy the event. We do encourage people to um, have their families outside of the gate as you can to enjoy the fireworks show because that's really the attraction for this event. According to Mayor Toms, the fireworks show is the best in the Southeast. He says there will be many things to celebrate in addition to our nation's birthday. It will be the 80th anniversary of Robbins Air Force Base, Houston County's 200th birthday, and putting the pandemic behind us. We have so, so much to look back and realize that we've lost so much in this last year. But it's time for us to, you know, turn that page, get things going again, and realize how much we also have to be grateful for. In Warner Robins, Ariel Schiller, 41 NBC News. The doors will open at 5 p.m. and the event is free to attend. Well, still ahead on 41 NBC News at 6, Bike Walk Macon is holding a town hall that gives you a chance to ask the tough questions to Macon Bibbs leaders. Details on that event next. Get news anytime on 41NBC.com and the 41NBC News app. 41NBC, clear, accurate, to the point. Ask Angie, Fridays on Daybreak and 41 Today. Your radio home in Middle Georgia for Atlanta Braves baseball. Sports Radio, 93.1 WXKO. Thesuperstations.com. Three can't miss episodes of Wednesday's most watched dramas. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This guy's a box of loose screws. Did you force him into surgery? Why would I risk my job? I can't believe a lieutenant says he's finally here. His arm was all surrounded. You and Jay, how you would think. Does it matter? It sure as hell matters. An all new Chicago Wednesday, tonight on NBC. I'm attorney Mike Hostelow. If you've been injured in an auto accident, remember this. We'll come to your home nights and weekends 24-7. We'll get you the most money you deserve, and we don't get paid unless you do. For nearly 30 years, we have helped almost 30,000 injured people in their time of need. If you've been injured in a car wreck, do yourself a favor and call me now. Call 844-GET-M-I-K-E, Mike Hostelow. The Loser family would like to thank Middle Georgia for all your support during this time. And right now, we are offering you rock bottom prices on all our inventory throughout the store. All our bunk beds, all our bedroom suits, all our mattress sets, all our dining room suits, our entire inventory throughout the store. That's Loser Furniture Express, 1673 Eisenhower Parkway, Macon, Georgia. May God bless. Radio home in Middle Georgia for Atlanta Braves baseball. Sports Radio 93.1 WXKO. Thesuperstations.com. In high definition, 
This is 41 NBC News at 6. Well, Bike Walk Macon will host a community conversation about transportation in a unique way. The organization is calling the discussion a rolling town hall in which residents will get the opportunity to ride their bikes alongside community leaders. The bike ride will be three and a half miles starting in Pleasant Hill and ending in Jefferson Long Park. Rachel Yumana, executive director of Bike Walk Macon, says the goal is to give people a chance to ask questions about transportation and pedestrian safety. What are those steps that Macon Bibb County has to take to accommodate pedestrians and transit riders and bicyclists and people with disabilities? Um, so we're excited to have um, just that intimate setting to ask some of those questions of their specific ideas. And Yumana says if you aren't comfortable riding a bike, there will be an outdoor discussion with Commissioner Paul Bronson and Sheriff David Davis. The biked portion will include Jamie Gauday with the Macon Transit Authority and Judge Verda Colvin. The event starts again at Jefferson Long Park tomorrow night at 530 and it is free and open to everyone.